When we view our document in the Outline view, we're presented with a contextual tab for outlining at the left side of the ribbon, and that contains three different groups. The outlining tools provide us a variety of tools in order to expand, collapse, and work with the document itself. That's where we want to start. The left half of this particular group is all about how we format and arrange content. The right side, on the other hand, is all about how we're able to see the document content in this view. Let's get started with the right side. One of the absolutely phenomenal things about Outline View is the ability to finally be able to see the forest amongst the trees. Now by that I mean in long documents, sometimes we're in the middle of a page, and it's hard to even tell where we are. What section are we in? Are we at the top of the document or the bottom of the document? With the Outline View, we can actually expand and collapse our entire document. That is, of course, presuming that it was formatted correctly. Let's start by saying we want to show a level, and in this case, let's do Show Level 1. That basically collapses the document down. Now as we scroll, what you'll see is there are a variety of things that are being shown here. What we should be seeing at this point are only our main headings. If we move back up, and instead of choosing Level 1, we go all the way to the bottom and say Show All Levels, that's when it expands it out and we can actually see all of the detail, including body text. And then of course, depending on the complexity of our document, there are other levels that we can see as well. If we are interested in working on a specific section, we can collapse everything else, like we've done here, and then expand only one section. For example, we could just double click, and that expands out that particular section, showing us whatever amount of text may be appropriate and contained in that particular section, whether it's a page or a paragraph. If we go back and say we want to collapse it all the way down to level 1, one of the things that I notice is that I'm seeing some things that I probably shouldn't be seeing. In other words, some of these are headings, but others are actually supposed to be subheadings. What this means to me, because I've experienced and worked with this a little bit, is that we probably didn't configure our style just right. So let's go ahead and fix that, and then come back into this view. After all, one of the reasons for using Outline View is so that we can get an overview of the document, including some of the things that we may not have done exactly right regarding styles themselves. In order to work with the styles, we're simply going to close out of the Outline View. That should return us to our document, and you'll notice that whatever was selected in the Outline View is where it takes us. In this case, it takes us to page 7. Let's make sure that we're on the Home tab, because what we want to work with are our styles. You may not have been paying that close of attention, or you may not be that familiar with the document, but what I recognized from the Outline View is that our You Got It subheading is the one that doesn't appear to be correct. If we move over to the Styles Gallery, we should be able to right-click on that, and we can say that we want to modify. The outline level that's being used by a style is actually part of its paragraph settings. We don't see that from this first window. Instead, we need to go all the way to the bottom left, click on Format, and choose Paragraph. Then we can see the outline level. In this case, this is supposed to be a second level heading, so we need to change it from Level 1 to Level 2. Now, we certainly could have done that when we originally created the style, but if you didn't think about it then, or maybe it wasn't necessary at that point, you can always come back and modify it here. Now we can click OK, click OK again to get out of the editing of the style, go back to our View tab, click on the Outline View, and now let's go ahead and click on Level 1, and we see that this is greatly simplified. Now all of those Heading 2 that we're supposed to be Heading 2 are gone. If we want to see them, we can click on Level 2 from the Show Level option, and now they're back, but they appear indented like they should be. Please don't forget that this particular setting as part of our styles is not only important in the Outline view, it will also be important when we undertake the creation of things like our Table of Contents. So remember we talked about it here, and we'll revisit it again in the next chapter. What we've learned about the Outline view is that displaying or hiding different levels not only helps us view, understand, and work with our content, it also can help us clean up some inconsistencies that we may not otherwise recognize. Now let's talk about the left side of the Outline Tools group. We have an outline because we created a document in the traditional way, and applied styles designated as headings. Now we're simply coming into the Outline view to take advantage of its features. Alternately, we could have created a brand new document and come directly into the Outline view and begin creating the document by adding headings. This is actually probably more the way we learn to create long documents like reports in school. Outline first, then add detail. We can do either in Word. 
To start with an outline in Word, we'd simply come here and use these tools on the left-hand side to designate what should be at what level as we type the text. We already have a document, though, so we can use the existing content but work in the same way as if we'd started from scratch. Regardless of how we start, we use the tools on the left side of the outlining ribbon to arrange our content, to promote and demote it, and make it consistent with what we want in the real content in the normal view. Notice we have double arrows, left and right, as well as a heading designation. When we select a section of text by either using the icons or regular click and drag, we can use any one of these tools to promote or demote the text as far as its level or heading designation goes. If we use the double-headed arrow, it promotes it all the way to heading 1, as opposed to the single arrow that is only going to promote it one level. If it was at level 4, for example, it would make a level 3. Using the double-headed arrow for level 4 would make it a level 1. And likewise, we can go the other way. If we demote by one level, which I think makes sense, we can do that, but we can also demote it all the way down. And in Word, all the way down means to body text. Using the up and down arrows, we can arrange the content in the outline. We can use the plus and minus signs to expand and collapse the levels. Now when we select these levels, remember that the key is to click on one of these indicators. For example, when we click on the plus sign next to Management, Structure, and Organization, it not only selects that particular heading, but notice it selects all of the content below it as well. This is really important when we're trying to organize the document itself. If we go up, and say only show us level 1. And if for some reason we decided to rearrange the content of this document, maybe we wanted general description of the business above business goals and objectives, by clicking on the plus sign, then using the up arrow, we have just been able to move everything under the general description of business above business goals and objectives. Whether that was one line or 100 pages doesn't matter. It was that easy and now you can see why using this view is beneficial, especially when we're trying to rearrange significant portions of our content within the document. We don't actually want to move this content, though, so by repeating the same techniques, we can put it back by simply clicking the down arrow. If we didn't want to move the whole section, we can also double-click to expand it out, and then we can select any one of the levels that may be below the first level heading. If there were second or third levels, we could choose to just move those levels and their related content, just like we did with our Heading 1. So this view can help us generate the overall structure of the document, perhaps more easily than the normal view. Have you ever tried to rearrange a lot of content within a large document? I mean, sure, by now we know how to cut and paste, but sometimes it's hard to even find the start and end of a certain section, and then to find exactly where we want to move it, it just gets to be very difficult. Sometimes when you say, there's got to be an easier way, there is. And right now, we're in it. Even though the outline view has all these great wonderful little tools to help us understand and modify the structure of our document, or even create master and sub-documents, for those really big projects, we can't do without it. But when all is done, we want to go back to the normal view. In order to do so, all we have to do is move to the ribbon and choose the